Troll Scroll. So the situation in Tamriel is that you've got three young muscular alliances around the periphery of the continent, and in the center is Cyrodiil, and there's a power vacuum there. Now, Cyrodiil is a big prize, a fertile heartland of the continent. It's also the symbol of power over Tamriel in the White Gold Tower that has been the center of the empire for millennia now. So the three alliances uh, all have their own reasons why they feel like they should be ruling Cyrodiil, but the fundamental reason is that the empire and Cyrodiil and the family of nobles, the Tharns, that are ruling it are weak and the alliances are strong. So the Empire is weak, but their leaders are cunning. The current occupant of the Ruby Throne in the Imperial City is Empress Regent Clivia Tharn, and her father is actually the Chancellor of the Elder Council. His name is Abner Tharn, and he is a very old but powerful and really wily battle mage. His family have been secret Daedra worshippers for generations. So when he sees the threat of the three alliances around the periphery and their inevitable interest in Cyrodiil, he turns to his family's old allies the Daedra, and Molag Ball's main agent on Tamriel, the necromancer, Lord Manamarco. As the alliances become aware of Abner Tharn's Daedric connections, that becomes just one more powerful incentive to go into Cyrodiil and take him out. So, the alliances are very different, and they have different reasons, and they have different justifications for why they are going to be marching into the center of the continent. And this goes back to the individual leadership of the three alliances, and their motivations for why they're doing this in many ways reflects the values of the alliances themselves. So the Daggerfall Covenant, the reason why they feel they must prosecute this war, really goes back to history for them. The leader of the Daggerfall Covenant is High King Emric of Breton. He is a sort of amateur historian of imperial history. And it's clear to him when the Empire is strong, that's when things are peaceful and good for the people of Tamriel. And the Empire is fundamentally a human endeavor. And at the moment, the humans on Tamriel are failing, and it's up to the Daggerfall Covenant to take up the torch and keep the elves from mucking things up. Now, the Ebonheart Pact is more attuned to the mystical side of things. When they become aware that there's a great threat to Nern, they decide that they're going to have to mobilize to confront it. Amalexia, one of the living gods of the tribunal, the leaders of the Ebonheart Pact, she takes notice. The scryers and the priests and the wizard tell her that Molag Ball has got some kind of... ...great magical existential threat to Nern. Now, having the Empire working with Molag Ball and Mana Marco absolutely cannot be tolerated. So the Ebonheart Pact decides they're going to have to muster their forces and march on Cyrodiil.
The third alliance, the Aldmeri Dominion, is led by Queen Irene of the High Elves, and her reasons for pushing this war into Tamriel are geopolitical and also personal. Before she'd assumed the throne, Irene had been an adventurer in Tamriel, and she had suffered personally at the hands of Abner Tharn in the Imperial City. Irene has seen the rot at the heart of Tamriel, and she believes that it's time for the elves to resume their responsibility to rule, to retake the White Gold Tower, which they built in the first place, and to get rid of the bloody and warmongering humans who, in empire after empire, have been drenching the continent in oceans of blood. It's time for the elves to go in, kick the humans out, and put things back to rights. What's great about this from a gameplay standpoint is that it gives each alliance a distinctive feel and ambiance. They each have their own methods and goals. And the player gets to experience this difference from inside each alliance. They get to take up these methods and try to achieve these goals as they're playing through the story of the Alliance War. It's a hallmark of the Elder Scrolls series. There is no single truth about the world, that everybody sees things from their own vantage point. And it's that legacy of a rich and nuanced world that we've taken up and expanded upon for Elder Scrolls Online. Episode 10 of Troll Scroll, an Elder Scrolls Online podcast. My name is Tom Powers, and as usual, we have a huge show ahead of us. Let's see, we got new Q&A from the ZeniMax Online team regarding the Aldmeri Dominion. Finally, we're finished with the Ebonheart Pact. You can get some sort of insight, lore-wise, and perhaps game-wise, on what the Aldmeri Dominion can bring to the Elder Scrolls Online. Along with that, we have a new video question of the week, and much, much more. Before we dive in, 